Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another special episode of Esoteric Atlanta. We have our favorite TikToker again with us today, Elizabeth, with her beautiful, beautiful son, Levi. These beautiful babies are why we do what we do. <laughs> We're walking into a new tomorrow. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. We're doing real good. It's, uh, no. it's August. <laughs> I know. I, I wish I could run around in my underwear in August because it is hot yeah. as hell down here in the south, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, up until this past two days, we've been like 100 degrees, 100 percent humidity, and then all of a sudden, it's like slight taste of fall, which I'm yeah. very about. But and that's yeah. what pe people don't understand who aren't from the south. It's not just the heat; it's the humidity. Yeah, literally. I know we're doing a deep dive into New Orleans now on my channel. And I keep talking about part of the mystique of the South with the what the Westerners who came here had to learn how to survive because right. they weren't used to the swamp land, the swampy heat. It's like walking through a bowl of hot soup. Yeah, my husband is from Mozambique. And, uh, you know, you think Africa, you think hot, obviously. But He's like, no, this is worse. This is different. <laughs> he's like, because over there, he's right next to a beach, like where he was mm -hmm. from. Uh, and he's like, you at least had the breeze from the ocean. This is just miserable. Like, he's it is. from Africa and he can't handle it. <laughs> it's miserable. That's why I keep telling people, like, yeah, it's miserable here. All these people from the north and in the south, we call people from the north Yankees. I know in Europe, they call us all Yanks, but we in the south call the northern people Yankees. So they'll come down here to the south. We love you, by the way, people from the north. But they'll come down to the south thinking that they're going to save money on heating. But what they don't realize is what you save on heating you're yeah. going to be spending on air conditioning. I there are some places in the South, they won't even let you live in a place if you don't have air conditioning. Yeah, I'm it's sitting in front of a vent right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Somehow it's blowing up on me. <laughs> yes. I, I, had, I filmed in our bedroom the other day, and it was so hot, I had the fan on. And I turned the air conditioning unit off because it was loud, but you could see my hair moving. And I was like, listen... You're just going to have to deal with yeah. my hair moving. There's no way I could film this under these lights with this freaking heat that's just yeah. coming off the pavement and just, it's gross. Like it, you, you, the, when the settlers first came here, there was malaria here. You can see why. I mean, it was, we have down in Louisiana, we got the bayou, we got the swamps here. It's, right. it's definitely, yes, it is definitely. And, and little babies like Levi who are born in this weather, they can handle it better than we can. Right. We were born here too. The little kids are yeah. resilient. He also gets to run around in his diaper. So that helps. <laughs> no. Levi, come here. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Come here. It's okay. He's the star. It's his show. It is. Anyways. <laughs> come here. Well, speaking of your sweater weather, you have an awesome shirt on that I want you to tell my people about because you, dear, have opened up your own store. I have. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of a, it happened all so fast, but um, here, let me grab this. <laughs> okay. Come here. Uh, whoa. Um, yeah, it happened really fast. Um, yeah. I just kind of felt like I needed to stay home and focus on him. And I honestly just wasn't vibing very much with my previous job at all. Yeah. Like, I just kind of, the mentality was just, like, not matching mine anymore. So I uh, decided to quit and, like, find something else to do. Well, you're okay, honey. That's okay. We've all, most of my people have children. We all, it, you're fine. You're fine. He's just really mad. He's trying to climb up to get to the phone. <laughs> Here, I want to go to a different room. <laughs> digga, 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 digga. The phones are fun, aren't they, Levi? You can play games on the phones. You can look at yourself in the camera. Yeah, he's never, um, he's usually, I've never really, like, given him the phone, but he's, like, just started to get kind of interested in it recently. Um, but anyways, I, uh, I was starting to... Just, yeah, I'm not vibe with the company anymore. And so I was like, I need to do something different. So I decided that I was going to start a t-shirt line because I have a lot of like creative ideas and like, you know, I just, I, I really like planting seeds into people's head without being like super blunt about what I'm trying to say. Right. Uh, and I, uh, I, um, 
have been wanting, I've always been really in, into like fashion and a lot of different creative outlets, but um, me and my husband design clothes when we go to Africa, his dad uh, makes them. So oh, we're cool. like, how can we kind of dip our feet in, you know, now to eventually in the future, like do something out of Africa, basically to like support his family and all that. So I started this just kind of to dip my toes into the fashion world and just kind of start my own business, just right. start from what I have, you know? Um, so it's actually been really great. This is one of my sweatshirts. Um, this one I call cherry tree lane because I loved Mary Poppins growing up. <laughs> um, but all of the designs have deeper meanings behind them. Um, and uh, they range from really like spirituality to like conspiracy theory <laughs> kind of meaning wise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, one of my uh, followers on TikTok was like, can you make a shirt that says it's all pantomime? <laughs> I was like, I can't. I'm going to do that. Limited edition. I'll make like 50 of them. <laughs> that is amazing. That's am you, I, I would love, well, you know, I have a couple of t-shirts that are kind of, they're older shirts that I've had for a few years now that are kind of subtle like that. Like yeah. one says um, deplorable AF <laughs> and the other weird. one is like, is like um, defund the media. Yeah. And I actually like the defund the media one. I, I try not to wear out in Atlanta too, too much because of the nature, but I accidentally like after filming one day, like walked out to the park with top, my boyfriend and our dog and some yeah. guy was on a bike, like riding by and he pointed at my t-shirt. He was like, Trump's coming back. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my boyfriend was like, yeah, man. <laughs> and I was like, shh. <laughs> what I seriously love is the fact that like, it feels like, you know, the way it feels and the way the mainstream media portrays everything is that like us conspiracy theorists or like truthers are the minority and that we're just not, we're, we're not, not at all. Like, <laughs> No, we're not at all. We're we're more civilized, and the other side is very violent. Um, and I and I blame that on the programming that they've gone through. They've pushed them to this point of like derangement. You know, when I was a little girl, at least, um, you could you know, two sides of the book, the political spectrum could be friends, and it wasn't that big of a deal, right? But now it's like, it's, it's like the left has gone so far left that it, they can't even, they can't even like process people not being, not believing what they believe. And therefore they're supporting this idea of, which is basically communism and right. censorship and yeah. which is also, fascism. and there's overlying, um, uh, uh, ideologies in both of these two extremes right. and the rest of us, like a lot of people I know who used to be on the left are now not because they're like, mm -hmm. you guys left me. I don't, right. I'm not down for this. I'm going to join them because at least they're letting people be free and right. make their own decisions. Um, you know, and I think you're right that we were in an Uber one day, we had both my boyfriend and my car's batteries died at the same time. And we got this Uber <laughs> to, to Ace Hardware, we're well, not Ace Hardware to home uh, auto zone, whatever it is. Yeah. And we were chit chatting with the driver and he was like, yeah, man, this whole thing is just BS. You know? <laughs> like, so I think you're right. I think most people like, no, most people know that there's something not right. right. And at least that there's something that this is, this is not right. You yeah. know, and um, and so, but they're scared to say it because the people that think that this is all the pantomime is truth are so violent that yeah. they don't want to be attacked. They don't want to have a smear campaign, a canceled culture, anything like that. So I think that's why we're very quiet. That's what we're called the silent majority. So, right. um, you know, but yeah. I know our business, our yoga shala here, we're not allowed. We're not going to be doing like any type of like passports or anything like that. We're not even talking about that stuff. We don't allow face diapers. We don't, you know, and we are actually busier than we've ever been because all yeah. these other studios in the area are starting to do this stuff and people don't want to be, they don't want to be a part of it. And so they're coming to us because at least they know that they can just be normal and not, yeah. not feel like they're being watched and judged and, you know, right. They're looking yeah. for something to feel safe again, which is just crazy. It's like, we're all, we all fear, feel the literally communism creeping in <laughs> like, it's it's awful i mean 
yeah, the yeah, I was gonna say something to the the whole like cancel culture thing. I just watched a video where this this African guy was like talking about how what he really hates about the cancel culture and the like honestly like the black community of um of being an African. He's like, you guys are like gatekeeping like braids and like you know and and like headdresses and african music and what you know like you're gatekeeping all these things that are cultural but culture is supposed to be shared right and you know it's not supposed to be something that divides us it's supposed to be an experience for all mm -hmm. and um and I was like, yeah, I definitely can attest to that because that's exactly what my husband says. Like, he's like, I don't understand why these people are like, think that this is theirs and no one else can have it. It's like, it's absolutely, you know, it's so divisive. It's insanity. But that's what somebody was asking me, like, how, how come like Florida is not a part of the deep South and I like consider part of the deep South. And I was thinking it's kind of along those lines. I was like, because Florida wasn't a part of that settlement of all these different cultures coming together to create yeah. what we now know as the deep South, which was native American, African, French, uh, German, English, all coming together. And that became this, this area where Florida was still kind of owned by Spain and off on its own doing its own thing before then it was annexed, but you're right. It was this combination, you know, of, of people coming together and their, their cultures merging and becoming one united culture and it is yeah. it is supposed to be shared there's a, a native american there's one i cannot and i'm totally paraphrasing so no disrespect but there's one tribe here that always taught their people that every ethnic group of people were given a gift by god right so what the native americans had as a gift was not the same gift that like the white people had or right. the asians and the whole point was that we were to come together to everybody had a special role to play. Right. Every ethnicity had a special role to play to keep this world together. And they've done everything to try to divide us because in my life, in the life that I've lived and I have friends of all different walks of life, I've never really known anybody to really care what right. some race was. Right. Exactly. They yeah. never cared. Like they no. might describe someone like you would say blonde hair, blue eyes. They'd say, you know, like the black guy who's got like the short hair or the white girl who's got brown eyes and you know, they'll use it as a descriptive term, but they don't, right. it doesn't determine right. your value. As, they don't, no one cares. If you're a right. bad person, you're a bad person and they come in all <laughs> station sizes. <laughs> you know? So, so, so like you're saying on Prime's video the other day is like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're going to ask about all kidding. <laughs> Every, you, you got white people who are assholes, black people who are assholes, you got everyone, everyone's got somebody that, that is wicked, you know, yeah. and the same thing is flipped. So what is your husband coming from Mozambique? Uh, you know, Todd and I talk about this a lot. Like we love this country so much and, and the freedoms that we have, but both my boyfriend and I have had the ability to live and really be in other countries and experience mm -hmm. life there to understand the differences. And we always kind of think these people that, that hate this country First of all, they've been brainwashed. Second of all, they've never experienced, mm -hmm. really experienced living in another country. But your no. husband, who is from Mozambique, what is his experience coming to America? What does he think about the differences between where he comes from versus what we have here? Um, I mean, he definitely is aware that there is a lot more opportunities here than there is where he's from. Um, it's kind of like just, I mean, the fact that he wouldn't even be able to make enough money for, um, to like come over here in general. It's great. <laughs> he's like, man, I'm not with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he's aware. So he's aware of that. And like, if you really want to like build a life kind of thing, then you, you know, it's, you know, easier done in America. He just, he's super aware of that. And, um, and so, I mean, he's, he definitely doesn't think that it's like a, he doesn't think, he doesn't like put it on a pedestal, I should say. So he knows that it's like a super blessing to be here and everything. Um, but he knows that it has its own issues mm -hmm. and that it's not perfect by any means. Um, and he's very much like, you're not just handed things here. You've got to work for it, but at least you have the opportunity to work for it. Um, so that's kind of his mindset. It's kind of hard because how he grew up with like tons of missionaries coming uh, in and out of where he was from, they very much had like savior complex. <laughs> yeah. Savior. 
our complex. Yeah. Um, and he just, uh, he never wanted to be seen as like, oh yeah, you're just marrying a white girl just to escape. And, uh, you know, and just well, to get that in her. itself is like a horrible <laughs> programming. Like, Awful. no, I fell in love with her. Right. Exactly. I mean, he had like, he's a very attractive man. He had plenty of opportunities. <laughs> like, right. He, like he just happened to choose me kind of thing. Right. Um, and it's, it's just like, even that mindset of the people that were around us at the time in that um, environment were telling us that we couldn't be together, that, you know, he was just using me like tons of like, opposition in the very very early stages of our relationship but uh we're both we're both people that very much go with our follow our peace um Mm -hmm. and our intuition and whatever you want to call it um and at that time I was like this is the only man that I ever actually felt peace about (laughs) so uh, didn't have any red flags or anything which says a lot yeah Uh, and so I uh so, yeah, I mean, it was just kind of, um, there's a whole lot of terrible stereotypes that are put on him um, and were put on our relationship in the early stages of it. But now it's kind of like we're proving ourselves, which we didn't have to because we really didn't care what they thought, but we're right. kind of well, unintentional. People get used to it too, right? People get, you, you yeah. become, sometimes it's good to become yesterday's news. Yeah, exactly. You know? Sometimes yeah. it's good to just kind of people can move on and like, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and once people get used to the idea of, of you and I'm sure, you know, anybody who's in an, not just an interracial mm-hmm. marriage, but an inner country marriage, when you've got mm-hmm. a spouse, you're, you're, you are merging cultures and you are yeah. having to get somebody's paperwork in order. And, you know, it's all this crazy stuff that they've, and we know when we, we, so we've heard when we flip into the new time that we won't need that anymore. That's all right. maritime I, law. I'm <laughs> very, very, very uh, curious to see if that really, yeah. how that works. Just, yeah. I mean, he has a green card yeah. and everything, but he hasn't tried to become a citizen yet <laughs> just because the world's kind of gone crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Can so, he carry dual citizenship? Will he be able to carry two passports? If te- in the old system, a, a new system, he probably don't have yeah. to worry about it. But technically, yeah, just as long as he like goes back and renews his passport from back home, um, he can. So that's kind of what we've just kind of been doing. What about until- Levi? Will he, <laughs> is he is he just on an American passport, or will he have both? Uh, I mean, right now, until we go over there, yeah, he just has an American passport. Um, but we'll get him another one. I technically can have citizenship in Mozambique also just from being married to my husband. So that's helpful. It sounds like it's easier there. (laughs) Um, Okay. So this is what's funny is uh, if a, (laughs) it's so funny. This is just explains the culture so well. Um, If a American or not American, but if a foreign woman marries a Mozambican man, she can have citizenship from being married uh, to him for five years or something like that. I think it's five years. Um, and then yeah. if, a, if a foreigner, foreigner man marries a Mozambican woman, uh, they, they it takes seven years for them to have citizenship. <laughs> it's like, they're all, they're all for foreign women coming in, but the men no, go away. <laughs> so, you know, you know, that, that reminds me of like stuff from India. Cause we spent so much time in India. Like, you'll ask these questions and they're like, we were laughing, you know, in India, everybody has a job and, and you go to a shop and everybody is like, the guy carries the money to the other person and everything runs a certain way. And there's yeah. like this like ice cream shop where we go to it in, um, in Mysore and they don't call milkshakes milkshakes, but I'll call it a milkshake for people to understand. And on the menu, they had like two types of milkshakes, chocolate milkshake or vanilla. And I'm not a huge chocolate fan. So I I'm definitely a vanilla. Like I love vanilla. Mm-hmm. And so we're there and I, I ordered a vanilla milkshake and they said, no, madam finish. No more, no more vanilla, but I'm mm-hmm. watching them make the milkshakes and they make the chocolate milkshakes by taking vanilla ice cream, milk <laughs> and chocolate sauce. And yeah. so I was saying, Oh, just chocolate milkshake, no chocolate sauce. Then and he goes, Oh, <laughs> not possible. <laughs> not correct, not possible, madam. No, not possible. And that that describes India so well. Yeah. Because they that they have certain ways of doing things. And so 
me coming and being like, oh, I'll just, just, okay, I'll pay for the chocolate milkshake. Just, just don't put the chocolate in. Just give me, you know, the, it's, it's, it's different countries are funny to, to experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, um, so I get that totally, but, um, but I guess you guys haven't been back to Mozambique in a while since everything. Yeah, it was 2019 or no, wait, when was it? No, it's 2018. Yeah. 2018. How are they doing over in Mozambique? Are they just living life or are they got some regulations or? Well, see, that's awesome. That also explains Mozambique. They technically have regulations, but everybody thinks it's a complete joke. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, well, I mean, they have literal famines and disease yeah. and like malaria and AIDS and all that kind of thing. <laughs> like, this is like constantly. The flu? Really? The flu? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But and then like the police are trying to enforce it and no one respects the police because they know they're corrupt. They know they're cor you can pay the police off so easily. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. something even Charlie says is like, you know, every time he's gone into Africa, he like gives the person a hundred dollar bill to say he got so and they're like, all right, here's here's this. Yeah. Like, Dollars, here's this. <laughs> that's, how really it kinda, that's how it kind of is in India, too. They have something called bakshish, which is like a legal term for bribery, basically. Yeah. And um, and I actually, when we rescue dogs over there, we have an awesome vet that will like do the dog's passports and we'll make mm -hmm. sure like the dates line up with the dog's leave of their shots as the dog's mm -hmm. leaving the country, um, yeah. which is amazing that they'll do that so we can get these these animals out. But yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I actually it's kind of like in India, the the police officers, a lot of them are on bicycles where mm -hmm. we are. Yeah, and I had to go from where we were staying to the other side of the city to go to a Western Union. And mm -hmm. one of my friends who was with us, who's from Bangalore, who's from India, told me that he was going to take me to make sure everything worked out. OK, and so we get on a scooter and riding on the back of a scooter of a person that's from India is like a roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, it is like that's exactly Mozambique. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, we ride scooters, but we're a little bit more like yeah, no. a preschool the way we ride them. But anyway, they have this helmet law in India now and I didn't have a helmet. And so we're like, we'll just go. And so I'm on the back and I didn't have my helmet on. The ticket is only like, was only like 200 rupees at that point, which is like, two dollars and once you get one ticket they can't ticket you again for the rest of the day so i was like you know what it's fine i'll just pay the 200 rupees whatever and so we go there i get what i needed at western union we're coming back and my friend like leans back to me and he says the cops are flagging us down hold on and so he speeds up and the cops are on pedal bicycles. I'm freaking out because in America, if you do that, that's a crime. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. That's right. fucking in well for you. And so yeah. I'm panicked. We get back to where we're staying on the other side of my store. We get to this little cafe. I'm like shaking, like looking over my shoulder, like ready for the cops yeah. to come. But that's just how it is there. But yeah. like Africa, it's just people know. They know how to get, get by this. Yeah, you know? the cops really don't have much authority over there at all like yeah. they uh, they call them penguins that's, that's kind of what they call them. <laughs> it's funny i love it it's like such a uh i love the mindset over there it's so relaxed and so yeah. like nothing's that big of a deal like yeah <laughs> yeah this is life it's just I, life it's a beach town for sure so it's uh even more relaxed than most places i feel like in africa but it's like you have one event a day and if you get there you get there like it's like weddings yeah. it's supposed to start at two o'clock doesn't start till six or seven at night because it's just kind of like you get there <laughs> like the bride doesn't show up for like three hours you know <laughs> Love it. and americans we're so like punctual yeah. with everything and everything well not just americans anybody from the west is europeans yeah. are that way as well canadians are that way as well so it's that's very much a western as i said my pen flying that's very much a western <laughs> mindset so have, has his parents met levi no none of his family it was really sad because his grandma actually died recently who was really close with and he was so so heartbroken that um she never met him but it's kind of like we haven't been able to go over there um, yeah. in general. Uh, and so, I mean, we plan to like go every two years, but you know, we went in 2018, we didn't go in 2020, obviously. So, <laughs> um, that's what makes me the maddest is what they've done to families, like people yeah. who with funerals, I have one grandparent who's still alive. Um, uh, my dad's mom 
and she has dementia, but she's in a retirement home with the medical staff. Mm -hmm. And my sister, who's the only one of her grandchildren who has children, was really good about bringing her kids up there to see her. Um, just so that they would, they would have those memories and she would kind of be reminded that she has great grandchildren, Mm -hmm. but ever since they shut everything down, like they've gone to see her, but they've had to like stand outside the the window Mm -hmm. to see her. And she doesn't totally understand why, because she has dementia and the fact that they're not even allowing these grandparents to see their grandchildren or their great grandchildren. Yeah. I'm sure any grandparent would sacrifice a few days of life just to be able to hold those babies. Right. Right. You know, I mean, it's, it's just sad. And meanwhile, they're, you know, doing their events. And, and I, I hope that that wakes people up that they're able yeah. to see that it's, it's the have and the have nots at this point. Right. You know? Well, speaking of that, I asked you this off camera, I'm going to put you on the spot and guys, these are just our opinions. We have no magic crystal ball. That's telling us anything. We know plans change, and this is just an, a projected opinion. So don't hold either of us to any of things we say. It's just this is us talking about what we think is going to happen this month. What do you think is going to happen this month? Um, oh, man, all I can say is based off of just what I've been feeling. Um, and I was saying this on a live today on my TikTok, but I, I have felt in the past two days especially. Um, the uh, <laughs> felt like very much the lion essence, the lioness essence coming out, and I'm just done. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm done with everything. Um, you know, it's technically Leo season, so it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then they talk about the Lion's Gate portal that's happening mm-hmm. or something like this. I don't know really Mars, what I'm about. Mars I, is the warring planet, and it's in Leo right now, so yeah, yeah. Oh, um, so I'm, I'm very much, uh, feeling that energy. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are, and it would make total sense for like everything to hit the fan in this month, Mm -hmm. just from astrological point of view. Um, because I mean, like God is represented as a lion a lot of the times. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel, um, I mean, even within myself, like so much has changed just so quickly. Um, and I think a lot of people are on the same page, um, that way. And I think that it's causing things to speed up a little bit, um, just because people are just kind of, they're done with not the being pantomime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> done with pantomime, um, so and we're, and we're seeing that all over the world. I mean, yeah. people all, and the thing about the United States guys is that we are still technically a Republic, even though, you know, the Democrats don't want us to be a Republic. So that means that each of our States has a certain set of like rights. And so right. we're not seeing as much of a backlash as far as like people getting in the streets, in the United States, because some States like you're in my state are, are pretty, you know, we, we're not, we're not, we're open, you know? Yeah. And so people don't feel the pressure, the need to actually push back. Whereas some states like California, New York are ha- feeling that even more, but France, um, wow. I mean, the, no, no one can throw a revolution like the French people. <laughs> they can throw a damn revolution. Let me tell you something. The French people, that's, that's where they shine is revolutions. So, I mean, the French were the part of the reason why we want our revolution. Let's be right. honest, guys. They came over and helped us and they went over and did their own. You know? So, so I am part French, I believe too. So maybe that's why I'm feeling extra <laughs> on TikTok. There's a saying calls. I'm waking up choosing war today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel. Like, especially the past like few days. I'm like, I'm waking up choosing war. I don't care anymore. Right. I don't about tiptoeing around people's feelings. I don't care about like gently pushing some or gently steering someone in the right direction. I'm just like, this is stupid at this point. Get on board. (laughs) Yeah, like, how can you not see this? Like, how can you not? It is so obvious. It is so obvious. Like, I don't know. Like, we we look at the the website of, like, I might have to bleep these words out, guys, but I'll put the text on the screen. We look at the website. And what's on the website is not what they're telling you. It's it's cognitive dissonance. And so if you look at the website, they've got the truth on the website. 
Yeah, and, and they very say, different. Say their butts for when it does all blow up, and they're like, "Well, we put it on our website." <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, so, I know. Um, so we've been watching that, and it's like we try to show people, like, don't just listen, research, right. look. Right. Um, but yeah, I am. We there's this nail salon here in Atlanta that. Um, I went there like it, it, it turned out haphazardly. One time I went there and I noticed people didn't have like face diapers on and, and I, I took mine off and, and I started chatting with the guy doing my nails and he was like, Oh yeah, we're like super Republic. Like, we're like, you know, super Republican. All like, and he goes and everybody knows it. So everyone comes here. And so I went there like a month ago and it was like a freaking party in there. It made me think of like prohibition, like the speakeasies and prohibition where, you know, they had, for those who are not from American prohibition, they outlawed alcohol in the United States. And so they have these like speakeasy, these like hidden bars that you have to like knock behind a, a wherever it was hidden and you go and you could, and it felt like that at a nail salon, like all these people who were awake in Atlanta, like uh, people of every race, every gender, every sexuality were in there. It was packed. No one had anything on their face, like getting their nails done, drinking champagne. Like it was like a celebration. I'm like, we're so fun. Us people who are awake, we're fun. We're fun people. Right. You know? <laughs> like, we're not stressed out about like, you know, walking around trying to cancel anybody. Like we're not trying to shut people up. We're not trying to cancel anybody. We're, you know, we're not trying to take people's freedom of speech away. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, it's, it's also like just a super hypersensitive culture of which like, I can't offend anyone. It's like, um, if you're offended, that's your own problem. Right. <laughs> not else's. Well, they've, they've tried to pass this narrative of like your truth or your feelings. Right. There isn't your truth. There is the truth. And right. your feelings are not facts. Right. <laughs> your feelings uh, are not facts. There's a teacher that I used to listen to and she was always like, your feelings don't care about your future. <laughs> so stop like basing every single decision you have on them. Like, I think there's a difference between yeah. feelings uh -huh. and intuition mm -hmm. and people get those mixed up. Yeah. You want to yep. know what He's <laughs> just like, Mara said something amazing. She said, you know, what's the difference between fear and intuition? Fear, fear makes sense. Mm -hmm. Intuition yeah. is not. My friend Cindy said another good thing. She says intuition won't have any emotion attached to it. It'll just. Oh, it's true. It's very and, true. And I know when you're for my yoga studies, when you're triggered, when you feel triggered, that's not something that you need to push on the other person, but that's your body yeah. telling you you yeah. need to work on something. There's something right. you need to work on. It's right. not for you to push it out to other people. It's for you. It's, it's your psyche saying, listen, there's an unresolved thing here that you need to work through, right. right? To find liberation from that. And we've just, I mean, I can't even get over, like I was watching a drama channel the other day, just trying to like relax my brain for a little bit. And all the way, the way this person was speaking, I was like, holy crap. It's like, yeah. you have to handle every situation with kid gloves it's and then apologize awful. still just in case. And it's like, off. I mean, a century ago, 18 year old kids were going into battle. Right. <laughs> right. And now they're like in safe spaces. Yeah. Like won't come out of their bedrooms. Like, you know, just get like <laughs> being cyber bullies. Like mm -hmm. uh, any negative comments that I ever get usually are from like these, these like <laughs> less than 20 years old, <laughs> like kids, yeah. that, like, you know, you know, saying, I don't even all kinds of stuff, but it's just kind of like, what? <laughs> you haven't even experienced the world yet. <laughs> right, right. And my, like, my I, I mean, I, I was no raised. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just. There's no reason for them to get offended. Like they haven't really. They've only experienced. Like that's part of the problem is they haven't experienced like the rest of the world. They they think their little bubble is all that it is, and that's a very like American. I feel like ideology it's like they have no idea that there is like more to the world i mean 80 yeah. percent of the world lives like my husband's family yeah. like in like he doesn't not technically a mud hut but like really close yeah. to it yeah <laughs> no i i see that in india as well uh, poverty in america is like the taj mahal compared to what the rest of the world lives like and you yeah. don't realize like how blessed we really are in our country and people don't understand that and they start to get entitled and they start to think that they, and I loved how you said, like he, your husband realizes there's opportunities here, but they're not handed to you. 
yeah. you have to work for them. And that's why I hate this whole idea of like, you know, this whole like privileged thing, because everybody has to work. Everybody yeah. has to work for what they have. You right. know, and of course, if your parents do have something to help you with, any parent would give their child those any opportunities they can. But that doesn't mean that the child's going to be able to write on their parents' coattails. At some point, they're going to have to actually apply themselves to carry on. And that's, right. that's the beauty of, of this country. That's the American dream is that right. you, can, you can, you can do, you can be an entrepreneur in this country. Technically, you don't even really need a, a, a formal education to make something right. of yourself in this country. If you want to, you know, yeah. if, you, if you can do it, you know, me even starting this t-shirt business, it's like, Oh wait, I technically am an entrepreneur. That's super mm -hmm. weird. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And tell everybody it's on Etsy. I'm going to put her links down in the description box below as well. And be looking out for that pantomime t-shirt. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, but it. that's it. You're an entrepreneur. You're just doing yeah. it. Yeah. I, um, it's, a. Uh, it, it's it's really nice because I I didn't expect yeah. my husband to be super so supportive, but he is. Like he he's like he's like yeah, like and that's kind of also like the spirit over there where he's from is like yeah. you know mamas will go and sell the fruit that they make on and like in the market and they'll like you know kind of be like their own little business owners, um, and they're good at it. And so I was you know <laughs> I didn't really expect him to be as supportive as he was, but I'm very thankful that he is because. I get to That's stay home and it's a good marriage. Yeah. yeah. Get to stay yeah. home with and, and just like create and you know, it doesn't feel like work at all, which is amazing. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And that's this thing with like, I know for you with TikTok, me with YouTube, it's like when you first start something, I think people are really afraid of failure. Like if they fail at something, that's it. It's the end. Right. But every time you fail at something, that's just a learning opportunity and teaches you, you know? Right. And when you start like, I'm, I don't even want to go back and watch the first YouTube video I made. Like, I know it's there, but I don't want to look at it because I'll probably cringe the whole time. I'm sure you feel that way about TikTok as well. Yep. Whenever you start something, you have to kind of stumble in order to figure it out, in order to figure out your rhythm. And, you know, you can watch other people and get ideas from other people, but you're you and you're always going to do things your way. And sometimes mm -hmm. you have to figure out how your way is of doing something, how right. your way is of owning a TikTok channel or a YouTube channel, you know, yeah. how Charlie Ward does his stuff, how Tom Numbers does his stuff, how Janine does her stuff. We're all unique and you have mm -hmm. to figure it out, but you, you can't be afraid to fail. What do they say? You know, fall seven times, stand up eight. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I feel like that's something also everyone's cr um, craving like nowadays is, yeah. is authenticity. I mean, like, people are so tired of just like the same things over and over again that are just like mass produced to us. Like yeah. there's a McDonald's, there's a Burger King, there's, you know, all kinds of fast food joints and they all are very, very similar. Like, you know, and then people that are like influencers, social media stars, celebrities, it's all the same thing. It's all the same people just pretending. Like, Their <laughs> life is fake guys. It's all fake. Too. Those pictures are <laughs> Photoshopped. It's all fake. Yeah. That too. Yeah. I I just feel like people. The oh, you got oh. me. <laughs> I <typed> it. <laughs> I just feel like I I feel like one reason why TikTok is genius is because of um how real and authentic people are on there, and it yeah. makes people like like they're like I didn't know other people were like this like me in this way because people are so so open on TikTok it's kind of amazing. I know now does TikTok have are you dealing with any type of censorship are they so very weirdly the only time you'll probably have to bleep these words out the only time that I get censored huh? is when I say something about the uh I'll say I'll say Jabberwocky like I see Katherine Edwards say Jabberwocky, um, and uh, the um, like the shedding. Um, yeah. That's I get censored from for that. <laughs> um, and well, then, then you know you're over the target, don't you? <laughs> uh, and then uh, I was censored for um, talking about how my husband's family is from Mozambique and thinks the whole uh, you know whatever ridiculous because of their experience mm -hmm. and I like disputed it and they actually like put it back up so that was nice but because I was like I'm just saying an experience I'm not like giving facts or anything like that like right sharing a story yeah. <laughs> um, 
So they put it back up, but that's kind of, and like weirdly enough, it's not like they're not watching me super intensely, I think, because um, whatever they do censor is like months and months old. Um, so I don't really know. It's very random. I haven't gotten taken down yet. I know a lot of people that have, but because uh, there are some other truthers that are doing the same kind of thing. Uh, but they talk a lot more explicitly, explicitly than I do. I very much just kind of like tiptoe around it and like pose a question on most of mine. Um, so I think that's kind of what is keeping me up. <laughs> um, we were talking so about that before we even started recording, like on, you know, there's only a few of us left up on this platform that we're on right now. And I think we have in a way like knock on wood, we have kind of learned how to play the game yeah. and we help each other. Like, yeah. like what words we know are trigger words. And so, you know, and, and the audience is super, like everybody understands, like everybody gets it that we have to bleep out certain words in order to stay up. And like yeah. for me with certain, I'll probably have to do it on this episode as well. I will disable the comments and it's nothing against the viewers. It's because they can also read certain words. And right. so if certain topics are spoken about in the episode that could cause a conversation in the comments, which is what we would want to happen on right. a normal, normal. I don't want to censor you. <laughs> we would want people to ha then have an open conversation because that's yeah. where critical thinking comes into play. But we would have we have to disable them because we don't want the uh, robot that's scanning everything to read these multiple words and then flag the right. channel. Um, right. And I was telling Elizabeth, you know, back it was probably like a year ago or something. I don't. Um, remember how long it was when a bunch of our peers, our friends got pulled from the platform. And back then the rapture, the rapture yeah, it was the rapture. They got raptured. <laughs> they got raptured. They raptured <laughs> over to bed shoot and rumble. Um, but they, uh, at that point, we believed that this platform, I'm trying to be careful what I say, guys, this platform we're on right now had money. And so they had money to hire people, actual living human beings to monitor these yeah. people who had big channels like David Zublik. I do a show with him once a week on his platform. Now he got taken. Um, he only had like 200,000 subscribers. So these big people, um, they had actual human beings. We believe watching yeah. them and finally hit the button. But this point, as my boyfriend was saying, he thinks that they, this platform and other companies have lost so much revenue because of the changing of the tides of, um, of who's in charge. Let's just say, um, mm -hmm. that they don't have the money now to hire human beings to scan yeah. it, that they have to send it through a machine. And we noticed this because words that we've been struck for for a very long time are now affecting channels that are not truth or that are like drama channels. Like they're starting to be affected by saying certain words like the cure or the Jabberwocky or, you know, the, the, the flu virus, you know, the, that, you know, they, the beer bug, like they're starting to get struck for saying these words that we've known about. So it's become apparent that they're losing money. And so that's why we can be, as I was telling Elizabeth, they're not, they're not able to understand the context of what we're talking about. They're just listening for words because it's a computer. It can't understand context. I think that's also because I know that TikTok has changed its um, uh, terms and conditions. Um, and it was basically saying that you're going to be more like monitored more. Um, and <laughs> it's spying on you for sure. Like it's spying on every little thing you do. It's like watching you, recording you while you're in the app and all that yeah. stuff. I mean, we know that they do that with your smartphone. So. Yeah. Get yeah, we have uh, we have monitors we put over our camera when we're not filming so they can't, you know, look yeah. at us in our house. It's just creepy. Yeah, it's just freaking creepy. Like, it's not like we're doing anything. We're like laying around <laughs> watching TV. They're not, but it's just creepy that they would want to have that access, you know? But also, the whole reason behind it is they are, because of the whole AI thing, mm -hmm. they're to get as much. We're like, we're like test subjects to them. So they're trying to get as much information to create artificial intelligence. Hey. <laughs> he wants me to pull him in this basket <laughs> oh <laughs> that's so fun though that's just a riot yeah <laughs> um but they're trying to use us as basically like human test subjects so that we could so that they can create artificial intelligence as if they were humans um so we're a bunch of guinea pigs <laughs> yeah uh, 
Thank but, God that we're not going to go into that world, though. I mean, I know, like, everybody has said, like, Juan has said that we have to kind of have a dark night of the soul and we have to have, like, a near-death experience. I feel like we have been having those, though. I feel like those of us on this side of the, of the board have been having those, like, dark night of the soul experiences watching yeah. all of this stuff happen and knowing and, and then being frustrated with your fellow man. Like, come on, guys. Like, come on. Come on. I mean, and being just like super empathetic, empathetic, and well, <laughs> empathic. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just like, I feel like a lot of truthers are. That's kind of why they, we in, like innately know, like we understand what's going on a little bit more. Um, and I just <laughs> I feel like being like that is just making it 10 times more difficult because you feel what everybody's feeling. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. It is. I mean, I get messages all the time from people like, I don't know how much more I can take. And honestly, like we come on our shows and we're smiling, but we have moments like that as well. I'll tell you, like, you know, there are days when I the, being able to film video stories for YouTube and research certain topics, you know, it, it gives me a break from the stress because we, we feel it as well. We feel that pressure too. You know, we yeah. have an escape plan in case Atlanta goes crazy. We have an actual map of how to get out of the city. You know, we've been both like, we, we don't know. I mean, we, we have, you know, we have these in our house. We made sure we got those last year just in case. Um, yeah. and my boyfriend went and learned, took all his lessons he needed to take to be able to be safe with them. But, you know, it's like, we, we don't know, um, just because we have channels, I, yeah. I have like an insider here with the APD in Atlanta that I get information sometimes, but it's not like we know anything more than anybody else who doesn't have a channel. Yeah. We're just trying to put out what we can in order to, to con connect with p other people like us. Yeah. You Cause know? I mean, we understand that we're all thinking the same way and like feeling the same way, then it unifies us even more to actually stand up against the tyranny that's happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And especially living in a city, you know, most cities, people live in cities, you're surrounded by, you know, very blue, you know, ideologies. Right. And so it can feel very alone. And I know I'm so grateful that I have my boyfriend, you have your husband. Like I'm so grateful that I have a partner who thinks the same as me and, and uh, he actually woke me up to a lot of stuff. And we, I have somebody that I'm with and, and I feel bad for people who are alone, who are yeah. single and, and feel alone. And I just, you know, yeah. part of us having our communities on TikTok and YouTube is to give people like outlets to feel, not feel. I mean, I feel that when I watch Charlie Ward or watch other people, I feel better. I right. feel better knowing that there are other people out there that see it yeah. that, as it is just like we do, you know, cause the, right. the, the main people, the main people on the TV will make you feel like, as we said at the beginning, like you are a minority, like you're the yeah. one, you're the, you're the one that needs help, but that's not the case. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think about my, uh, my dad, he literally lives across the street, but he's alone and, you know, single. And I mean, he's in his sixties, um, but he's watched the news religiously my entire life. Um, and the only people he talks to are people that are alone and single and watch and also news. get that fear program. It's all programming. Yeah. It's all just, it's, that's why it's so repetitive. It programs yeah. you. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many commercials uh, I have stuck in my head from just when I was like a child and I don't, I literally, I don't have TV. I have like the internet. Mm -hmm. So that's like my, so we are too. We don't have, I, we don't have cable. We just have the internet. Um, and yeah, then, like, yeah, I don't see very many commercials except maybe on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, the commercials that are stuck in my head, I can say them verbatim, verbatim, uh, you know, just from hearing them as a kid, like, yeah. like, yeah, absolutely. You, me too. Right? Me too. And guys with the commercials on YouTube, those of us that have ads, a actually YouTube has sent us all, all emails saying that they're going to be putting more ads in. And some people who aren't even monetized have ads on their stuff. We don't get to pick the ads. Yeah. So <laughs> they're not asking us like which product we want to put on our shows. They right. pick that. And usually I think it's different for everybody. It comes on, it comes up stuff that you're looking at. Like if you're like, I just ordered some shampoo I liked. And so now when I watch stuff on YouTube, all the ads I get are for shampoo. So that's not us 
So if you see like a political candidate that would go against what we are saying, it's not us that put that on there, guys. It's, it's, we have no control over that. So yeah. Yeah. And it is. It's like they, probably, they probably even do that on purpose. <laughs> I'm sure they do just to create confusion. <laughs> right. For the viewer to be like, wait, are you a shill? You had such and such. No guys, we have absolutely no control. And they are putting like, for those of us that do have monetization that do have the ads, they send us an email saying that they're going to be, you can pick how many ads you put in your, your show. And I usually like pick the minimum, the minimum, the, the, the least amount of ads, but they are now putting more in to, to, to collect that revenue. Again, that shows me that they are hurting for money since they're doing that. My boyfriend's band, the flying mystics, they are not monetized on YouTube and they have ads on their music. And they oh. even contacted the platform to try to get the ads taken off and they wouldn't do it. So it's, we're losing the right. We're slowly having our rights to our own work kind of taken from us. You know, yeah. in reality, like the ads, you make a con, you, you basically have a contract with the, with the AdSense company that supplies the ads. This platform is just a platform and they're always going to take a little bit to keep the platform going. But the fact that they're trying to like monopolize on that agreement that the content creator shows you that they're hurting, they're hurting, yeah. they're hurting for, for yeah. money because they've been just had everything taken from them from the, uh, from our side, basically from, from yeah. our side. <laughs> so, you know, it's, Our proof for you. <laughs> I know there's proof, right? There you go. There's proof. So when you guys get frustrated because there's like all these commercials that I didn't even put on there, that should be actually good news because it shows you that they're struggling. And so they're yeah. going to do anything they can to get, make what they can to continue their lifestyle and their, their life basically, because it's coming down to that. Like, that's why this is taking so long is because this is a life or death situation for mm -hmm. both sides, basically. So yeah. We got God on our side, though. So, you know, <laughs> exactly. In the day, he wins. <laughs> I know he wins. I'm ready for the credit reels to start rolling, though. Like, I'm so ready for the credit reels in this movie. I, I, yeah, my dad told me about the new uh, variant, and I was like, Are "You freaking kidding me?" He's like, "Oh yeah, like there's probably gonna be another lockdown soon." And in my mind, I'm like thinking, "Like, oh, is this the like ten days, the three yeah. days?" <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I was like, good God. No, yeah, and it's, it's, no. it's the name of it, guys, means like the deepest level of sleep, too. Yeah. So they're basically mocking you. If you think that this is real, they're mocking you, basically. Yeah. Um, and my, yeah, my, my boyfriend's parents called us last night. And they were all concerned about it. And my boyfriend was like, we're good. Yeah. We're okay. He's not, yeah. he's not closing down. He was like, they'll have to come arrest me. I'm not closing my business down. No, and, and I, yeah. I think a lot of people, uh, especially in more conservative areas, um, I think a lot of people will be the same way. They'll be like, "No, we're not doing this again." Sorry, no. Like, <laughs> Your our livelihood can't can't support that. Like they're trying to bankrupt us. Like small businesses cannot support that. And here's right. the thing: like with the first the first shutdown, we realized that the people being able to shut yourself down is coming. They like to tell us we're privileged. But being able to shut yourself down and work from home is coming from a place of privilege. When you right. have a small business that's customer service based, which most are, you can't mm -hmm. do that. You don't right. have a corporation sending you money to keep you afloat. And let me tell you, if anybody who's not awake yet just happens to be watching this and you have a corporate job, when the small businesses go down and they don't exist anymore, the economy goes down. When the economy right. goes down, your okay. corporation isn't even safe. They're going to have to start letting go of people too. So right. think again about that cushy corporate job. It's not always going to be there. If, if, if we, if you lose half of this nation's economy, it's not going to be there anymore for you. So yeah. Yeah. And that's what, and I, I think you're right. I think people are just fed up. It, it just fed up. I mean, yeah. my, another, my boyfriend on, I think it was Friday night. He went to the liquor store to get some whiskey and um, the, he went into one and they were all, you know, face divered up and they like looked at him and kind of said something to him. And, and he, they said, do you have one? He was like, no. And he was like, yeah, well you have to leave. And my boyfriend was like, okay, cool. Well, I won't be back. And I'll be telling my friends and yeah. he went to another store. None of them, all the workers were, you know, free, yeah. free breathing. We'll say free breathing. <laughs> And, um, and everybody else in the shop was free breathing and everyone was happy and having a good time. And Todd was like, this is what's going to happen. Go woke, go broke. There you go. <laughs> they're they're going to lose everything because they're following this ridiculous, this ridiculous fascist, hello, fascist narrative. So anyway, yeah. 
don't even think that we would have to come up with a term for free breathing. <laughs> Golly. That's another t-shirt. I'm a free breather. Free I'm a free breather. <laughs> <laughs> no, like once I started oh, making the, t-shirts, I'm like, oh, I can put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. I can put that on a t-shirt. What's your political affiliation? I'm a free breather. <laughs> free thinker. Yeah. <laughs> free breather, I'm a free breather. Breathe, breathe. And that's and that's the thing too, guys, is like they, you know, all the religious texts, all the spiritual texts, they talk about God breathing life into man and man stood up. What's the one thing they're trying to take away from us is that connection to our breath, which is our part of our connection to God. So yeah. Hebraically, yeah. the this like uh Hebraic teacher that I listen to, um, he's even like when you breathe in, it's the yah, like yeah, way yeah. out. Like in and out. I mean, the first cry of um, of a, a baby when they first are born is the hay, which is like the essence of life, basically. Wow. You know, like it's like being you're taking that away, the essence of life, literally. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, in, it's in a- yoga, it's called pranayama. Is your breathing is called pranayama, and pranayama prana is life force, yama is extension. Yeah. So it's like extending your life's capacity. Through your, right. It's giving you, and when we detox, we de- detox through an exhale, you know, the right. inhale raises our vibrational up, you know, yeah. and so, and also the breath is what creates heat in your body and heat is what purifies your cells. And so, right. and with, with this, you're just taking in your old detoxed carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. That's why we don't allow them in our yoga shalas because you, it's mm-hmm. literally a bigger health concern to be yeah. doing that and breathe. So, you know, yeah. it's, I it's, mean, I, when I have worn one, I, I, I've never been an anxiety person and I feel anxiety in my chest. Oh, absolutely. Like, like in the very beginning when I was just postpartum and I was just like nervous about everything anyways. Yeah. Um, that's part of the postpartum. <laughs> um, I, uh, I would wear one just cause I didn't want anybody to bother me. And, yeah. uh, and I would have like tightening in my chest, anxiety, and I, I would take it off after like two minutes, like, especially if no one was around me, but I was just like, I can't do this. Like, I don't know how people do this. Like, I don't either. Really okay with being muzzled? Like, no. Well, and <laughs> oxygen, getting oxygen to your brain as well. Like it can cause yeah. like mental issues. And my grandfather was a surgeon and before he passed away, he actually warned my mother that medicine was, he died in the eighties, but he warned my mother that medicine was changing and be careful. Mm. Medicine is changing. The pharmaceutical wow. is, has too much power, but all these surgeons ha- were coming out and saying when they have the, fa- the, the diaper on, oh, it's only an of time when they're doing surgery. So they don't drop spit. <laughs> you. Hello? And they take breaks and take their mask, take it off. Oh, are, are you froze? Can you hear me? Oh, there, there you are. are. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So they, the doctors are saying, we don't even wear these all days. We, we just wear them. So we're not dropping spit into your body when we're opening you up. And they, t- surgeons do take breaks sometimes in surgery and they have more oxygen pumping into that room. Like they, they understand the hazards to this. And right. so a lot of them were, there was one guy here in Atlanta that kept saying like, this is not okay. But you know, of course he got silenced. So, you know, they started threatening people's licenses and all that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah. it's, but so do you think, do you think by September we'll be seeing a de- very different world? You know, I hope so. <laughs> I feel so like just from the crazy backlash that's happened when anybody tries to put a date on anything. I'm yeah. like, you know, I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's bring it out even, even further. We know that on Sean Hannity, Mr. T said, we don't, we can't wait until 2022. Like we cannot yeah. wait. So let's, let's move the date further by Christmas. Do you think we'll be seeing a very different world? Uh, I think so. I think so. I mean, I, I feel like it's going to be a very much a suddenly type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like a part of, well, okay. So part of me feels like it's going to be a suddenly type of thing. But then a part of me is very much like we have lived in a pantomime for Mm -hmm. a long time like longer than we even know because oh did you oh you paused again okay there you go (laughs) um but yeah we I was I talked about this in my TikTok the other day I was like you know the dark side has always has been ahead of us for so many years so like the general public has been ahead like you know their technology is ahead everything's ahead and so I feel like 
they plan stuff and then work out how they're going to, you know, put it into the mass population's mindset. Right. Uh, you know, and so even the people that have been presidents and whatnot, they're also just pantomiming. Um because, you know, or trying to get the narrative in a certain direction kind of thing. But they're like, if we do this, 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 then this will happen. And they already know this. So I'm kind of like, we're all, we all, we've been in a pantomime yeah. for our whole lives, especially. So I'm just kind of like, I wonder how much, <laughs> I just wonder like how, how much of yeah. like how long we'll be in a pantomime in the sense of just like, can people, Oh. Oh, there. Sorry, I lost you for a second. Say that again. I was just I was saying I wonder how long we can be in a pantomime. Sorry, I kind of lost a train of thought. <laughs> but in the sense of just like, I don't know what people would do if we weren't in one. Right. I think there's uh, going to be I think we're going to I think all of us are going to have a little bit of PTSD. Yeah. 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 So I, uh, you know, on one end, I definitely hope that everything is done by then. But I'm like, I don't know to what extent it, that it will be done. Right. I think, I think, I think a lot of the plans, like, you know, the Nasera Jacera thing um, is going to take a like working out of like probably like 10 years, honestly, for like full, yeah. full effect kind of deal. For people to realize that we don't have, that our system isn't what we've been raised to believe it is. We're going to be moving into a whole new money system. Well, Please, yeah. yeah. And then just the impl implementation of that, mm -hmm. just like, getting every single country rebuilt and yeah. back up. It's going to take a minute. Like, yeah, and I don't absolutely. Think people really think about it like that because they just want it here and now because we're like an instant culture, especially in the Western world. Um, but uh, I mean, I think some big things will continue to happen this year. Um, this year is very much just like the birthing of it. Yeah, and absolutely. I agree. If you're a mama, you know what birth is like. <laughs> um, you think it's never going to end. I mean, at one point, I was literally like, I don't care how this baby comes out of me. Just get it out. <laughs> don't care. And I'm like a holistic, natural kind of person. I was trying to have unmedicated water birth. And after 26 hours, I was like, I am done. Like, Give me the medicine. Cut it out. <laughs> Hang out of me. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like a lot of us are at that stage. So. Yeah. I think, you know, Trump's team or the White Hats um, are kind of assessing every day uh, what the general uh, feeling of the population is. And I think definitely with this Leo season, we're, we're, we're like at this, get this thing out. Right. <laughs> In this now, you're yeah, at the precipice. And I agree with you because the good side doesn't want to, they know there's going to be people traumatized, but they're trying to have the least amount of traumatization and think about it guys i i know that we are gonna there's gonna be some stuff that's gonna shock us and yeah. your neighbor who is totally asleep mm. yeah. and all of a sudden they're gonna have to process like it's going to be you know but prime did say one time i love that one thing we have to remember is the love of god like yeah. once it, that, that love will radiate through everyone else and um and we don't even know i mean people kept kept asking my comments today like we're trying to figure out what our earth actually looks like because none of us really know anymore because NASA yeah. just lied to us and people are seeing like two suns now. And I know we asked Janine that question a long time ago, Tom and I did. And the cards basically said like, you, you don't need to know this right now. Like <laughs> blow up your brain. <laughs> yeah. You just hold on. Like there's other, it, we can't tell you this right now. Like, and I, and we got that phone call and I actually like, called Tom and I was like, what the hell are we standing on? Like, what are we actually standing on? Because like, what is this? Like, we don't, I mean, think about that guys, your whole life, you've been so indoctrinated to yeah. believe in like the solar system. Right. We had to make those paper mache little sun and, and yeah. but people are seeing two suns now. Yeah. And thinking, like what? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like what, what are the planets? Like what, what are the planets then? Are they, if they yeah. give messages to each other, then, then they're obviously like sentient beings. Like they're obviously something living. And if you look through a, 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 a telescope at them, they actually kind of pulsate. Right. So what are they? Yeah. What, how come every planet in our solar, in our solar system has a personality? Like Mars is the warring planet. 
Venus is love, you know, Saturn is this and all, all the, but yet earth is just earth. Right. Okay. So this is my theory. You want to hear my like way out there theory kind of thing. Uh, so my theory is that they are portals mm -hmm. um, and earth is a essential, like, like a womb. Um, I mean, I don't know what it's shaped like. I kind of have a feeling it's like a donut type of deal. Like it goes inward on itself. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Come from like, you know, at one, there's the whole, like our mountains, trees thing, you know, kind of deal. But, yeah. um, like, because if you look at it, it looks like a tree stump. Um, a lot of them do. Um, or like giants, they look like people that have like died and like, there's, you know, greenery on them. Yeah. Um, but I have a theory that the planets are portals, uh, essentially like from another dimension. And it's kind of like you journey through them. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's related so much to like when you're born, mm -hmm. uh, like what you journeyed through to get here kind of deal. Um, and so. <laughs> yes, I've heard that with the sun as well. I've heard the sun is a portal. Yeah. I've heard oh, yeah. the sun is a portal. Yeah. So that, that would make sense. And I've heard, you know, we're told the moon doesn't even really exist. It's man-made. Yeah. That's okay. So that's one part of astrology. I do not understand at all. I don't understand why the mo new moon is like such a big deal. If it's not a real thing. That's what I think too. I don't know either because I, we do like we, in our traditional yoga, we follow moon cycles, which we, that's how we, or we get the word month from is moon. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. like we close our shala down on full moon and new moon and women, most women listening, you get your cycle around either the full moon or the new moon. Um, yeah. women who are new mooners where the moon is completely blacked out. Um, you're usually more fertile than, than full mooners. I'm a full mooner, but women who are full mooners are usually will have like one child, maybe two if they want to, but they're usually like not really interested in that as much. So it's mm -hmm. interesting to look at the personality types between women anyway, um, huh. women who are full mooners also used to be, um, accused of witchcraft back in the day and burn at stake. So they would look at that as well. So that's a huge part of our history. They don't teach us anymore. And you're right. I, I'm, I don't know what to believe about that either because the moon does affect us. The moon affects the tides yeah. in the ocean. And, and right. I know cops have said like they make more rests on a full moon, full moon, new moon, like during new moon, I usually feel more tired during full mm -hmm. moon. I have like energy that's annoying. <laughs> like I have a hard time sleeping, you know, I'm more hungry and more snappy and I'm also PMSing, but you know, <laughs> um, but, and like men run on a solar uh, women. And so in, in, in the body, the inner, in the energy of the body, our downward flowing energy is a panic energy. It's downward. And that's represent, represented by the moon, our upward flowing energy. That's, that's pranic. That's represented by solar energy, the sun. Women are up on it because we have babies. It's downward. We everything goes downward. Our bottom halves of our body are usually stronger than our upper halves. Men are solar based. So men, women have a cycle once a month, the moon, the month. Men, though, have a cycle once every three months with the makes sun. <laughs> yeah. So for women watching who have husbands or boyfriends, that's why your husband gets in a bad mood once every like three months and gets a little bitchy. It's because he's on his cycle. Literally. He just doesn't have cramps and other stuff to deal with, but he gets like, he's on his actual cycle. So it's so funny. Yeah. What that made me think of, of, of tying into, like you said that people are starting to see like two sons. So in the Bible, it said God made, you know, the light of the day, the light of the night. Like, what if, like, I don't think that I don't, I don't think that God made the moon. Right. I just, so what if so we're saying do something with the other sun to then create the moon? What if they're hiding Interesting. it? What if they're hiding it? And that's why it affects us. <laughs> and that's super interesting. Yeah. Okay. And like they, uh, you know, it affects the tides mm -hmm. because it's a, I've heard people say it's made out of metal. Um, it's like electromagnetic, you know, pool because it's uh, like, it's a, like, it's a magnet. And maybe one reason our earth is the way that it is, is because it's interfering with the oceans, like moving like they're supposed to. Wow. Maybe this Just is why the cars, maybe this <laughs> why the cars were like, you can't know this yet because that, that would imagine, imagine, Imagine a CNN watching yeah. person. Yeah, no. <laughs> all of a sudden learning that. 
Yeah, yeah. So I have lots of thoughts like this. Like, once you get me on a track, I like get downloads, what people would say all the time when I just talk. It's really good for me to just talk. I'm actually going to gonna bring up your your idea to my boyfriend and I, because he's actually way like weirder than me when it comes to like abstract thought. Like he's yeah. been on this, he's 10 years older than me. So he's 40, how old am I? He's 49. He's <laughs> So right now he's 11 years older than me. I'm 38. I'm not going to give myself an extra year. Um, so he's been on this path for a really, really long time. And uh, he has been studying like Jordan Maxwell, like all these people for a really long time. And so he's the one that kind of pushed me in the direction I needed to go in. And he's really good. He's an old school, like conspiracy theorist. So he's been, he's actually been, I mean, he's getting annoyed too, but he's been more patient because he's like, listen, <laughs> This has been around a while. <laughs> I've, been doing this. I've been doing this for 20 years. I never thought I'd see it. This is awesome, by the way, because I've never seen this many people wake up. But, you know, but us that are, we're like, come on. But he, yeah. So I'm going to have, I'm going to play this back for him. He listens when I'm editing. He never watches my videos because he always yeah. hears them when I'm editing. Um, yeah. And I'm going to like, when I get to that point, I'm going to like call him in. He's not <laughs> here right now. So he can hear, because I think he would like, to hear that because we've talked about that. He thinks that there are people inside the moon. He thinks the moon's kind yeah. of like a prison of sorts where they've taken people, you know, right. and it hosted life. So um, it could be, it could be a multi, there's multiple dimensions. Like we've read that with Janine with like Diana, that they maybe took mm -hmm. her to a different dimension in order for her to survive all this time. So yeah. that's, I mean, imagine the average person having to realize that, that we're also right. dimensional. You know, right. like, yeah, what? Uh, yeah. Actually, the old system of thinking is way more easy to comprehend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's true. <laughs> but I know I've kept you for quite a while and you've got your little boy there. So, <laughs> but this has been such a fun conversation. I want to do yeah. this with you like once a week or once every two weeks because my people love, have, love when you're on. So, <laughs> you know, I love talk I, love I know talking. right this is literally I keep I even forget like we're recording this is just I like <laughs> just have to shoot the shit you know so I'm my kid on the floor talking to you <laughs> you know what that's we're all listen listen everybody watching knows this like we're all human beings we're right. literally we just said that we just opened up channels like we're just like you we have kids well, i don't yeah. have kids. i've got a very needy dog but you have <laughs> a child i have a dog you know we have our our lives and we we're dealing with all this too and so it, this is just like friends sitting shooting the shit guys so i you probably will not. be trying to I know I probably will be turning the comments off for this video just because of the nature of what we talked about. But what I'll do is I'm going to go to the community tab on my page and I'm going to put a little notice up so you guys can continue the conversation over there if you want to. So it separates it from the video because we really want to confuse that <laughs> AI. Yeah, like <laughs> that AI, so that AI can't figure it out. So, so, and I thank you guys for being patient with us. It's not just my channel that's doing this. A lot of other of our friends out there are having to do this as well. Honestly, again, guys, it has nothing to do with you at all. It's not personal at all. We, we would love to live in a world where we could have that up and have people have continue the conversation under the video. But right now we're doing everything we can to play the game so we can keep pushing forward together. So um, I thank you guys for understanding. Again, I'm going to put in the description box though that will be beneath the video. I'm going to put all of Elizabeth's links, her links to her TikTok, which if you are on TikTok, Elizabeth is awesome. And if you, especially if you have young friends or young, your kids have friends that she's young, she's hip, she's cool. And she says things in a way that young people will be able to, to like start to consider and understand. So I'm going to recommend her TikTok to everyone. Also her shop, her Etsy shop. I'm going to put it down link below as well. Again, be looking out for those t-shirts. When you make yeah. those t-shirts, you got to save me one. I will. <laughs> okay. Cause I want one. I want one of those t-shirts. All right. Uh, and you got to send one to Charlie Ward as well. You have to send one to oh, Charlie Ward. <laughs> so for sure. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna like send it to Lee being like, hey, made a shirt for you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah absolutely. That. All right, guys. Well, Levi, I hope you have a fun afternoon with your mama. Look at those cute <laughs> lips. <laughs> you are so adorable. Your lips are just so adorable. I just want to like squeeze his face. He's so cute. <laughs> you guys say something? Um, what do you say? No. Nope. Nope. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>
I'll see you say I'll see you later. I see ya. Bye bye. <laughs> He's like, what? Okay, bye. Next <laughs> time you're in Atlanta, girl, we should film a video together live. Oh yes, we should. Yeah. Uh, I might well my grandmother's birthday soon. We might come over soon. I'm not sure. Just wow. text me. Just text me and we'll we'll meet. I'm right in the middle of Atlanta, so we can film a video together live for people. So awesome oh, yeah. guys. Well, I'll let you go. I'll let you get back to your family and have a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>